Hey guys, welcome to Metten. So in this video, we are going to look at the pharmacology of the benzodiazepines. So previously, we have a separate uh, heading called as the introduction to the central nervous system pharmacology. So make sure you watch that video prior to this so that you will get a better understanding. So we'll move on with the pharmacology of the benzodiazepines. So what are the important benzodiazepine examples? As I just told you in the last video as well, we have the diazepam, lorazepam, clonazepam, oxazepam, midazolam, chlorodiazepoxide as etc. So these are all the important benzodiazepines. We have diazepam, lorazepam, clonazepam, oxazepam, midazolam, chlorodiazepoxide etc. Then what is the site of action of these benzodiazepines? Where does it act in our brain? It acts in the brain stem, limbic system as well as the midbrain that is in the ascending reticular system. So site of action is brain stem, limbic system as well as the midbrain that is the ascending reticular formation. Now let's look at the important part, how the benzodiazepines act in our brain. So mechanism of action, very important part as well as in your university exams as well. So make sure you listen to it carefully. So these benzodiazepines, they bind to specific site on the GABA A receptor. They bind to the specific site on the GABA A receptor, which is different from the regular GABA binding site. So we have a separate GABA binding site and it is not going to bind there. We have a separate site on the GABA A receptor. There the benzodiazepines are going to bind. So they bind to the specific site on the GABA A receptor, which is different from the normal GABA binding site. And what they will do after attaching to it, they help in the increasing the frequency of opening of the chloride channels. So we have chloride channels and they help in the increasing the frequency. So the they will not increase the duration, they help in the increasing the frequency of opening of the chloride channels. So what this will lead to? This will lead to uh, more and more intake of chloride ions and this leads to membrane hyperpolarization. And finally, it causes CNS depression. As you know, if hyperpolarization occurs, it causes uh, CNS depression. So again, I'm revising mechanism fraction of benzodiazepines. They bind to specific site on the GABA receptor, which is different from the GABA binding site. They help in increasing the frequency of the opening of chloride channels and thus finally leading to membrane hyperpolarization causing CNS depression. So this is the mechanism of action of the benzodiazepines. Now let's look at the pharmacological actions of the benzodiazepines. So firstly we have sedation and hypnosis. As I told you this comes under the sedation and hypnotics. So benzodiazepines helps in sedation and hypnosis. That is they reduce the night awakenings and help in producing refreshing sleep. So they help in producing refreshing sleep. Then we, they are also used in the used as anticonvulsants. We have diazepam and lorazepam commonly used in hospitals. They are uh, fine. We'll give them IV and they are used to control seizures, status epilepticus or GTCS. So they are used as anticonvulsants. Then we can also use them as pre-anesthetic medication and in the general anesthesia. So before you give general anesthesia, we give a set of medications previously. They are called as the pre-anesthetic medications. We have will have a separate video on that uh, topic. So they are helpful in the pre-anesthetic medications. They help in the sedation, amnesia as well as they, they are reduce anxiety called as anxiolytic. And what are all the drugs we can use? We'll use IV diazepam, lorazepam as well as medazolam. So this is about that. Then uh, we have, they are also useful in minor operations and endoscopies. Because of the sedative, amnesic and angiolytic effect, we, they are also helpful in the minor operations and the endoscopies. Then uh, they are also helpful in the centrally acting muscle relaxation. So they reduce the skeletal muscle tone and they reduce the spasms. In general anesthesia, the, uh, we need to reduce the skeletal muscle tone, right? So they also help in reducing the skeletal muscle tone as well as reducing the spasm. Then the benzodiazepines are also used in alcohol withdrawal symptoms, anti-anxiety as well as the conscious sedation. So this is about the pharmacological action of benzodiazepines. So let's revise it first. First, we are, they are used in sedation and hypnotics. They are also used as anticonvulsants. We will use them as pre-anesthetic medications in general anesthesia. They are use, also used in minor operations and endoscopies. They are uh, helpful in centrally acting muscle relaxation. Then they are helpful in the alcohol withdrawal symptoms, anti-anxiety as well as the conscious sedation. So what about the pharmacokinetics part of the benzodiazepines? They are available as oral IV as well as rectal root and they cross the placental barrier. They are metabolized in the liver and they undergo enterohepatic cycling. So this is about the pharmatics. Now let's look at the adverse effects of the benzodiazepines. We know that the benzodiazepines are generally well tolerated. 
but what are the adverse effects they can produce they can produce drowsiness confusion blurred vision amnesia disorientation and also tolerance as well as drug dependence so these are the adverse effects of the benzodiazepines they are drowsiness confusion blurred vision amnesia disorientation tolerance as well as drug dependence so if used during labor it causes respiratory depression and hypotonia in the newborn and that is called as the floppy baby syndrome so if benzodiazepines are used during labor they cause respiratory depression and hypotonia in newborn and it is called as the floppy baby syndrome so this is an important then what about benzodiazepine uh, diazepine overdoses if you give extra dose overdoses can overdoses can be reversed with the help of flumazenil iv so this this counteracts all the effects of the benzodiazepine overdosage so thank you guys thank you for watching video till then make sure you like share and subscribe and also if you found it helpful you can uh, share it or among your friends who want to learn more about the pharmacology part so thank you for subscribing i guess and i'll see you in the next video bye